Welcome to, to our next session. This time it's going to be a pure technical session delivered by my colleague Jonat, who is our technical medical guru. So he specialized in medical customers since he has been working himself for how many, five or six years uh, as a developer in a medical devices company. So he's going to speak about um, how QT fits uh, to into, med into the medical industry from a technical perspective, and he's going to show us a few showcases of existing QT references. So please give a big welcome to Jonat. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Petya. Thank you all for being here. So I will I'll try to make an overview of different features that are used in um, medical devices. Obviously, they're not all of the features, but I, I choose some that could be more interesting for you. I know that you know 90% of this was here, but I will try to, to put some new perspective for some of the features and to explain it a bit more how everything goes together and so on. And I will, I had some customer who asked me questions, so I'll try to answer them along with the presentation. So yeah, the first, the thing is that Qt is used in all types of devices, from small, from watches, from up to uh, lab, uh, lab equipment, like this is a, a laser control array uh, device, or a big, big medical devices, for, this is a C-arm, Device. This is a simulation device, but it's also been Qt is also been used in big in big uh, devices. So it's one one library who fits different kind of devices, different kind of specifications, and um, different so different kinds of requirements. So obviously the the libraries which are used may may vary. It could be the same, may, may vary. I will try to explain you what the differences between the different libraries and I'm not t telling you which one to choose. I'm just giving you an overview of what's possible to do. So first, the widgets. I mean, anyone, everyone knows widgets, but I think, and also, also a lot of people use widgets in medical application. So what I can say about widgets is that it's, they are very easy to program and to create the UI that the uh, physician needs. So the physician, what they need, they need to have the buttons in the right place, the right format, the right size, and they are very, for them, it's very important. And widgets, they give you this full control or to creating the, the user interface that the physician wants. I know that some physicians are paid by the study, so you, the more time they, use, they, they lose by using the UI and trying to understand the UI and fight the buttons, the, the more difficult that takes time. And, they lose product productivity. So it's all about productivity when we talk about widgets, to create the UI that you need. And also, it can be uh, easily, it's easy, everything is easy, easy to style. And when you style, so it's not only performant and you put the buttons that you want, but it's also about look and feel. So the physician will be efficient and will like working with the, with the widgets. Qt Quick, which is the new, uh, the, the meta language, the Qt meta uh, object language is based on this. So it's beautiful UI. So one of the main difference is animation. So if you have one button or one user interface, do you want the, the, the interface to move around? Do you want the buttons to move around? Do you, how do you want the experience to be? Do you want to have an experience like a desktop experience with the mouse? Or do you want to have an experience more like a touch experience like your phone? And this is what Qt Quick allows you is to create experiences like multi-touch experiences, which your, the, the, the user are, are used to it, the customers are used to it. Uh, and also because it's based on this QML is that the person who creates this, this UI, this user interface, should not be the expert in C++ who knows all, all the C++ 11, 14, 16, 17, and so on. It could be someone with minimal experience, minimal knowledge of C++, because everything is done with the QML and Qt Quick. So this is another advantage of, of using QML, is that, yeah, I'm, I'm the, the one on the top button, right? <laughs> no, that, so this is also an, an advantage that you can, you don't need to have a huge experience in order to create what you want. And again, Qt Quick allows you to create the interface that you want. You can place the buttons around and you can 
customize the UI so it's efficient for the, for the, uh, for the medicine, for the doctor. So this is the most important, it's efficiency for the doctor, and also we add a nice look and feel, actually in both cases. Here is the uh, productivity of the, the box, so Qt Controls 2. So you know it's, we have Qt quick, quick Controls 1 and uh, Qt Quick Controls 2. It's simple, one, never use it. It's one word, no, don't use it. Why? Okay, why? Because for performance reasons. So the, the, the Qt Control 1, which is up to 5.6, was based on native UI. So when you create each control, you create about 60 objects. And yeah, you, you destroy the memory. I mean, if you have a six core, 90 gigabytes uh, computer, yeah, there's no problem. Because, I mean, when I was working in, uh, in PAX, in medical imaging, you have up to uh, one image is 40 gigabytes of memory. So, th so then you don't care about memory. But when you go to embed it, I, so I showed in the beginning, you have like small watches or you have like lab equipment. Then memory starts to be a big problem. And quit controls one, it's not suited for this kind of, of uh, application. And also, if you have more and more objects, it's coming slow and so on. So bottom line, Quit Controls 2 is the way. So what's the difference in 2? It's based on, op on OpenGL. Let's put it like this. You have the scene graph. The scene graph, you have different backends in the scene graph. So it can be OpenGL, it can be software rendering, it could be DirectX, and so on. For the talk, I'll just talk about OpenGL because it will be easier to, to explain. But keep in mind that it's not necessarily OpenGL. By default it is, but could be we have about six or seven different backends for the scene graph. So let's say this, this is, we talk about the OpenGL case. So all of the elements are based on OpenGL. And this is why you can, it's easy to animate because in OpenGL you have the points, you move the points, it's a nice smooth animation. So you can do a lot of animations and a lot of things because it's based on OpenGL. It's purely open purely OpenGL, purely uh, DirectX, and so on. And also, inside the scene graph, we have something we call batching, which means that if you have multiple vertex that you want to send, so if you want to have three buttons, you don't send each button to the graphics board. You, you connect, you put together all the, all the vertexes, and you send them once. So this is another optimization that, can, that allows the, the software to be faster. And just on a parenthesis note, as every time you use a layer, you just, the batching doesn't work anymore. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, but if you use normal buttons and so on, the batching system works, so then it's optimized when it's sent to the OpenGL drivers. So this is about Qt Controls 2. Qt Controls 1, none of those. And, uh, oh yeah, I want to, uh, here we add more and more controls. So, now we have, I don't, know, I don't know the number we have, but I know that every release, three, four new controls. So now I think we release the menus, the action, and uh, the table, some uh, trees we are asked. So every release, we put more and more controls for the users to, 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 to use them and to, to play with them. Uh, so yeah, we have the, you also have the, the web, based on web engine for the medical customers. I don't think you want to have JavaScript in your applications, so we can leave it apart. But can you combine? So let's say you have a widget application. You work for it from Qt2, Qt3, Qt4, maybe Qt5 now. Can I use the scene graph, everything we work in, in your widget application? The answer is yes. You have something that, call, that creates one widget with the, the scene graph or the, the Qt Quick inside. The rule is, don't do it more than once. So every time you have a widget with, with uh, Qt Quick inside, it creates a, tr a new thread, which is a render thread. You, create, you, have a, you need a context, could be share, or most, most likely it's share, but you still need the context. So if you create five widgets with each e widget with a scene graph inside, your perform performance will go south and very fast. So, and as, same with the web engine. The web engine is a scene graph or a Qt Quick inside a widget. So if you have a web engine or two web engines inside widgets, your performance again will, will go south and very fast. So the rule is only one widget with a scene graph with a Qt Quick inside, and then you should be fine. And you, then you can use, even if you have a widget application, 
You can use everything we talk about quick, quick. I know you've been around. It's the last day. Everything you learned can be used in widgets. OK, so I think most of you know, know, knew all this, all this already. I wanted to make a cute, uh, uh, quick overview. Now, the visualization we have, so we have also 3D. So, so we have the 2D, which we just talked about, a cute quick and so on, and widgets, which is the native way. We have also the, the, the new uh, Q3D Studio. I don't know if you, you've been to the talks about it. It's a way to create a 3D user interface. It's a tool, actually, which was given by NVIDIA to the Qt company as a donation. And we, it's used to create 3D uh, UIs. How? You, you have your model in Maya, Blender, whatever. You create your model. You import this model inside the Qt 3D Studio. And inside Qt 3D Studio is like a PowerPoint. You can play around, do your animation, do your UI. You export this, and there's the Qt 3D runtime, which runs as a QML scene. So it's the, the, the 3D, Qt 3D result will be inside the QML scene. And I don't know if you, you listened to, the, to Lars talk this morning. He said that the goal is to have this runtime based on the Qt 3D. So you also have the Qt 3D, which is different from Qt 3D Studio. There are two different things. The Qt 3D, it's our, let's say, homemade, <laughs> internally made 3D engine. And the, the idea is to have the Qt 3D Studio based on the runtime based on the Qt 3D. Uh, why Qt 3D? What's the advantage of Qt 3D for, for you? I, one, one of the advantages is help. The help here you, you have like an engine, but imagine you have a, a very complex medical device, like a, a, CT, a CT scan on an MRI or whatever. Then you, you want to, to give like a help to the people so they can understand how it, how it works. And then what you do, you, you can create a model of your device, put it inside Qt 3D. It will take you half a day to do that once you have the model, because you need to understand how Qt3D works. If you are from scratch, right? I did it from scratch. I went to the, to the web, I took an Iron Man from, from the web, I put it in Qt3D, half a day it works. Maybe I, and so it's very easy to do it. And you can have a help, you can explode, you can show around, you can do animation, so you can show to, to your customers how your devices are work, if there, there is a very complex device. Uh, okay, Qt uh, data visualization, I will just Skip because I think uh, I'm talking too, too, too fast, too slow, too fast. <laughs> it's time. Uh, so the, the, the data visualization, uh, it's, it's a way to um, view, and visual, uh, view data uh, points in 3D. So uh, the data in 3D is based on OpenGL, is, is uh, performant compared to QCharts. QCharts is based on QGraphic view, so it's based on widgets. And if you, if you use Qt charts, you have to, to link with the widgets. You always ask why, because it's based on the widgets. And in, if you have huge data, and you, dynamic data especially, could be slow. This one is, but this one is 3D. So if you have like f five points, you don't want to use a, a cannon. You want to use only a, a rifle. So it also depends what you need and what you want to do. I'm just telling you from, a, a, from, a, from what's behind the, the hood, under the hood. So the, the Qt 3D run, the Qt Safe Render, we talked about, about a lot about the renderer these days. So what is it? Is it uh, with the designer, inside the designer, you can add icons or images in your UI, when you design your UI. Those specific, so in this case, the one on the bottom, we, those, those images, they will be rendered as bitmap outside the, the application. And a, C++, a purely C++ application will be created. Purely C++, no, tr no third library. And this application will be, it's, will be certified by the end of the year. And this is what we call the safe render. So if your main application crashes or has a problem or anything, the other application, which most likely you want to put in on a, on a separate, like a hypervisor for the automotive, and you have different hardware, completely different hardware, independent hardware, this application will still work. And maybe you, you'll not have the nice graphics and animation and so on, but the goal is to show to the user that something is wrong. Just to show the button there and actually it's, it's not working or it crashes or something like this, 
the user should know that something is wrong. So this is what the safe render is doing. And also what Lars said this morning as well is that you can restart the main application with the safe render. So I think this is what I said. Uh, vi the virtual keyboard, could, so I think the talk before said that you cannot put it uh, full screen. There was a lot of changes in the virtual key keyboard lately. So we have more and more languages. Okay, it's easy to add a new one, but we are also adding new, uh, more, la more and more languages. If for any reason you need a new language support, call our support team and you give them something to do. Because, you know, I ask them sometimes, they, they are bored. So just put, give them more stuff to do. It's because it's such a hard one. And also, it's uh, hand, hand write support. I play with it. It's also, also customable. So it's a, actually, it's a cute QML item. So it's part of the QML, the cute quick. It's an item, and you can style it. You can move it around. You can do whatever you want with it. I start to have also a retro kind of style. It's useless, but just show you how you can do it. Uh, OK, so this was mostly the visualization part. And now I'm talking about the communication. So uh, I think with the talk before, we were talking about Bluetooth. So Qt offers now uh, okay, the normal Bluetooth, but also low energy. And there was Windows 10 or Windows Universal Platform was added lately. I think it's 5.9. And Android and, and iOS were, were there before. So you can have cute on your watch or your, your medical wearable device on your phone. They communicate to each other. And with a phone, you can send the data to the cloud. And this is done through the, could be done with the through, uh, uh, Bluetooth low energy. Then the, the bus is also, we had the talk before. It was funny because he was telling all the, the features we have to present. I, I'm, I'm the last one, so I'm, not, I, I'm saying I'm repeating a bit. So yeah, you have the, the CAM bus and the MOD bus, which are the, um, some, of, some of the in industrial uh, peripherals API. So they are used in automotive, so we are putting a lot of effort in it. So if there's something change, we will maintain it and everything. So we are taking care of the maintenance for you. So we just give, you have the API. It will be stable. We will maintain it, and you have use it, and so on. Uh, I will uh, two more things before. So. This cute light, I don't know if you, you heard about it and you, 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 you've been to the talk. So it's about optimizing the Qt libraries themselves. So if you, you have like a problem with the memory, how, how big the application should be on your devices, or the memory footprint, the, the RAM, and you want to say, if you say, for example, I, I'm building with only one language. I don't want to have language support. But language support is in Qt Quick, it's in, in Qt uh, core, is it in widgets? It's everywhere. So how do you remove, if you say I don't want it, how do I remove this feature from all these libraries? The answer is Qt Lite with a Qt GUI configuration tool. So the idea is to, and you say at the end, you can make any developer an expert embedded device creator. So I'm, a, I'm an expert in creating device by, because I use this tool. So the idea is that you can remove stuff you don't know, you don't need, and you optimize your Qt build. And we could make it up to 10 megabytes, the whole Qt. OK, maybe it's not the fully functional 3D web engine version. But you can still start from 10 megabytes and then add what you need. And this is the idea, is to optimize the Qt libraries themselves. And, and this you do in the configure line. So this creates the configure, and you compile Qt with different defined parameters. And that's how you can optimize the Qt libraries. I think this is the last topic is the, yeah, it's the last topic. It's the, the cute uh, Wayland compositor. So, wow, this is fun. Uh, the cute uh, Wayland compositor. So you, you have different windows. It's a window management. So you have different window and different application in each window. So if you listen to, uh, in this case, you have the nice dashboard and you listen to Alicia Kids and then the Alicia Kid crashes, the dashboard will still work because they are separate uh, processes, separate application. And with Qt Wayland, you can not only create the different windows, but you can blend them, play around, animate it, you know, make cool stuff. I know why, and it's, so it's very useful in this safety-relevant uh, safety, um, 
applications. For example, this automotive, but I think in medical also you <laughs> could be something very useful. If you need to have one application which is like safe critical and the others, like the Alicia Keys tank can, can crash. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll talk a little bit of the two use cases. I mean, we talked earlier talk in the, this, this morning. So you have this uh, anesthesia device. So what I want to show you is here is, is the same device, actually. You see here it's done with Qt Quick. You have all these nice graphics and so on. So you can do it, and you have all these buttons. And like Roger said this morning, you can here you have like the, the 30, 12, and so on. These are the, the, the values. And what you want to do, for, you want to optimize. So you can just say, you know, the 500, I want it on top. Or I want the 40 on top, and so on. So you can optimize your, your UI with just drag and drop you know, in order to have exactly what you want. And this is very important with Qt for, Qt for Medical, is that we can, you can exactly create what you need and give, to the, give to, to the physicians the best UI and the most performant UI and the most efficient, because then he has the button, the information where, where he wants it. Like I worked in a medi medical company and we had huge XML files to configure, and then every little button, every little position was configured, every size was configured. So we were creating these huge XML files, we were feeding this to, to Qt, to the to application with Qt widgets, and everything was there for each doctor. And we were, we were not asking questions, why do you want it like this? He wanted like this, this button on, this button off by default, this button here, this button here, and so on. So everything can be done, was done with, the, with Qt, Qt widgets. So, and now with Qt QML, you can do the same. Oh, I forgot to tell you, I uh, talked with the, Qt, the, the Squish guys in front of the Qt booth, and they told me that widgets and, and, uh, Q, and uh, Qt Quick is fully testable by Squish. So if, again, if you, you create your application, you want to test it, Squish is one of the options which actually we're using internally for Qt Creator. It's used to, to test, uh, Squish is used to test Qt Creator. And uh, it's fully, uh, with Squish, you can fully test the Qt, uh, the Qt applications. QML or widgets. Is, they told me it's like no difference. And uh, I, I work with, uh, with Squish on the widgets. And yeah, I, you could do whatever you want, more or less. And yeah, and the last use case, it's, uh, this is the C-arm, again, the beginning. Okay, this is not a medical device. It's a simulation medical device, but if you look here on the top, you have the packs, the, the image visualization, and so on. So it's exactly like a medical device. And I think that's it. If you have any, <laughs> any questions, concerns, comments? It should not, no. Cannot? I cannot say no. I can say it's certified that it will not crash. But it's, I, okay, I explain you how it works. So it's a purely C++ based application, which is tested on a, which is it's tested, you can, it's very small, right? It's nothing to do, it's not cute. You, it's generated. But it's not cute, right? It's, it's a different application. It's like, I don't know, 200 lines of code or whatever. And I mean, you can test that. And you can make sh I mean, if you start doing it yourself, then I cannot get. No, you, you, I no guarantee. But if you don't hack it, it should be fine. No, you don't need a special hardware. It's, now it's up to you. The architecture is up to you. It could be on a different hardware. So if you want to say, uh, for example, in automotive, they have these hypervisors, which are completely different hardwares, one for the HMI and one for the safe render. This is what they do. You, if you, if you trust your hardware, you say, can you crash the hardware? In Windows, yes. <laughs> you have a blue screen every, every now and then. But maybe on a MIDI Linux, it's more, more reliable. You can optimize it more. So that, that, that's your decision. You can be on the same hardware or on different hardwares. Okay. Okay, thanks. Thank you.